Okay, so uh, we're going to continue with some more uh, system descriptions for question answering. The next system that I want to discuss is briefly is the system developed by the Language Computer Corporation, uh, Harabaju, Moldovan, and others around 2002-2003. Uh, so that's one system that's very different from the others because it involves uh, some uh, deep semantic analysis of sentences. It converts them into logical forms. So here's an example from the paper. A sentence like, heavy selling of Standard & Poor's 500 stock index futures in Chicago relentlessly beats stocks downward. So this is represented as a logical form using uh, different elements and attributes. For example, heavy is an adjective that relates to X1. Selling is also related to X1. Uh, of is a preposition that connects X1 and X6. And, and so on. And then uh, the, the system uses uh, different semantic axioms for inference. So for example, it uses lexical chains from a word net. So for example, if the word game is related to recreation and recreation is related to sport, it's able to use uh, this uh, lexical chain information to find uh, answers even if they don't contain any of the words in the original question. One more system from the University of Michigan is called CASM from 2001. It's also based on a noisy channel model. And the idea is that you want to convert the natural language question into a query. So this is different from the system by Marco and Eshihabi where the mapping was between a question and a sentence. So for example, if the question is what country is the biggest producer of tungsten, you want to convert it to something like this. Biggest or largest, where biggest and largest are synonyms of each other keep the content words such as producer and tungsten and drop uh, the content words. Uh, so CASM involves uh, a number of channel, noisy channel operators, for example, deletions, uh, deleting prepositions and stop words, replacing, for example, replacing a noun phrase with a disjunction that includes multiple word net synonyms and replace. So the third system in this segment is uh, by Ravi Chandran and Hovi from ISI 2002. It is uh, based on automatically learning surface patterns about uh, sentences that are likely to contain answers to a given question. It starts with a seed and then it queries the web and it finds patterns that contain both the question and the answer term. So for example, if the question is who wrote Hamlet and it knows that the correct answer is Shakespeare, it will search for documents that contain both the word Hamlet and the word Shakespeare, and then try to identify patterns that contain both of those uh, expressions and look for words that connect them together. Here's one more example. Mozart was born in 1756. Uh, the kind of pattern that the system is going to recognize is that was born on is an example that links together a name of a person and his or her birth date. Now this takes me to a much more recent system, the Watson system by uh, Dave Ferrucci et al. from IBM. That's the system that participated in uh, Jeopardy. It's by any stretch of the imagination, the largest Q&A system out there. Uh, it has been published about extensively. It has been covered in the press probably more than any other system. It won Jeopardy in 2011. And uh, some of the interesting features of the system are its architecture first. So the architecture is based on a technique called deep Q&A. So that's a technology that enables uh, computers to precisely answer natural language questions using uh, different types of knowledge sources, both uh, structured data, but also in inference engines and knowledge representations. Uh, it has a very powerful uh, hardware implementation. It involves 10 racks of IBM servers running Linux, uh, 16 terabytes of RAM, just RAM, uh, more, almost 3,000 cores, and it's operating at uh, leg-breaking speed of 80 teraflops. Uh, and most of it is written in Java, but also a little bit uh, of it is in C++ and Prolog. Uh, all of the components are integrated using IBM's uh, unstructured data uh, UEMA uh, system. So an overview of the Ferrucci et al. system is uh, in AI Magazine from fall 2010. And there's an article about it in PC Magazine that includes a lot of information about uh, its uh, background and performance. 
So what kind of knowledge sources does Watson use? It uses uh, 200 million pages of structured and unstructured content uh, for a total of four terabytes of disk storage. So this includes things like Wikipedia, other encyclopedias, dictionaries, news articles, and so on. It also includes things like WordNet and other uh, knowledge representation sources. One interesting aspect of the Watson system is not so much related to natural language processing, but it's certainly worth mentioning here. That is that it has a betting strategy. So the way that Jeopardy works is that you are not only have to get the right answer, but you also have to buzz in before everybody else. Now, if you buzz in, you're supposed to answer right away if you get selected to answer. And if you get the answer wrong, that means that you can actually lose points. So if you're really certain of the answer, your best strategy is to bet as quickly, um, sorry, is to buzz in as quickly as possible. And if you're not so sure, it may be better to wait a little bit and maybe let somebody else answer and possibly get it wrong. And in that case, you get some additional information and you can try to be uh, uh, the second one to guess and get it right. So the way that the betting strategy works is that you have some sort of confidence associated with every answer that you're getting. And if you're at least 50% certain, you try to buzz in. If you're not, then you wait. So how well did it do? Uh, it uh, was supposed to answer about 75 questions. It got 66 of them correct and nine of them wrong. Uh, most famous example of incorrect answer was in the category of US cities. One of the questions was about uh, which city has two airports named after World War II, one named after a battle, and one named after a person? And Watson thought about it and buzzed first and gave the answer Toronto, which was incorrect. I guess it, mass it missed the fact that uh, the category was U.S. cities. The correct answer in this case was Chicago with uh, uh, Midway and uh, O'Hare as the airport. However, even though it had no incorrect answers, it still managed to win uh, the game by a huge margin. The two human performance, uh, again, both of which were uh, winners in many previous contests, Ken Jennings and Brad Rutter, uh, walked away with uh, really small winnings compared to Watson. And again, uh, Watson is so well covered in the press, I'm not going to spend more time on it, but I have included here several uh, interesting pointers for future reference. Okay, so some question types that Watson uses, there's actually a really large taxonomy of those, that 2,500 of them weigh more than any of the other systems. But it turns out that according to uh, the law of diminishing returns, uh, about 200 of those question types are really common and the rest appear just once or twice in the entire history of uh, Jeopardy games for 50 years or so. Uh, by the way, when I talk about this archive, uh, it is actually available on the internet. You can go there and check every single Jeopardy question that was asked over the last 50 years, including the ones that uh, Watson had to answer. So now let's switch to a slightly different question. What are some of the challenges in question answering? What would need to be solved in order to make question answering uh, even more successful? Uh, so one obvious problem is word sense disambiguation. So there are many words in English or in other languages that have multiple senses and we want to be able to use uh, state-of-the-art word sense disambiguation to understand them. Next one is core reference resolution. Very often uh, the answer to a question may be in a sentence that doesn't contain the original named entity. Instead it may be uh, the second sentence in a paragraph and it can be introduced by means of a pronoun or a named uh, entity, uh, an aphoric named entity, uh, in which case we cannot really uh, identify this answer easily. So obviously uh, advances in core reference will go a long way towards making QA systems better. A third component is semantic role labeling. Uh, this is a topic that we're going to discuss in one of the future segments. Uh, semantic role labeling has to deal with identifying the main uh, predicates in sentences and their attributes. For example, if the action is about buying something, then the semantic roles associated with buying are the person doing the buying, the object being bought, the price, the location, and so on. So all of those uh, answers are likely to improve question answering. One other important topic about question answering is temporal questions. So uh, how to deal with answers that change over time. So for example, who is the President of the United States? 
Currently, the answer is Barack Obama. A few years ago, it was uh, George W. Bush. A few years from now, it will be somebody else. So we have to be able to understand correctly the time when the question was asked and the time that the answer was given in the document. And Jeopardy's specific concern is uh, to use the categories correctly. Just as I mentioned, uh, Watson made a mistake on a category about U.S. cities by giving a Canadian city. It is obvious that it didn't realize that uh, the answers were all supposed to be U.S. cities. Okay, so now we're going to switch to a slightly different topic, and we're here by concluding question-answer.